So, you're familiar with that uh, Greek Bambada situation with our brother Ron Savage and Poppy, right? Plus a few others who are kind of sounding about the sexual abuse. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people might not know. Yeah, a lot of people. All right. They need to pay attention if they don't know about that. The, um, <laughs> supposedly founding fathers of hip hop, known as uh, Africa Bambada, but we, we, we claim our name Africa from them, so we call them Greek Bambada or Bambada. Right? Um, he's, he's part of a group called Soul Sonic Force, and y'all might be familiar with his only hit that I know of called Planet Rock. So, now, it's been proven that for years he's been molesting young men. KRS One has recently came out with Actually, KRS One supported in front of the beginning. After all of the, um, many of the people, not all of them, because what like, we, we brother probably said over a hundred at least, over, at least a hundred personally a hundred. Yeah, that he knows of personally at least a hundred people that Bambada has sexually molested. It's a hundred and up. But KRS One comes out and defends him. People tell KRS No, that's not the way to go. Um, Afri uh, Greek Bambada bodyguard comes out, say yeah, these allegations are true. Zulu Nation kicks him out. A couple other people that grew up with him said, yeah, we've been knew he was doing this stuff. KRS-One comes out again recently, about a week or two ago, yes, and still supports his position and says, if you have a problem with Greek Van Bottom, you need to get out of hip-hop. Now, hip-hop is a culture of the people. Greek Van Bottom does not own and control hip-hop. But this is you. And this isn't the first time KRS-One said some foolishness. Because over a year ago, he said that black people may not want to hear this, but everything we have, all the rights, all the freedoms that we've acquired since we've been here, we owe to white people. Yeah. He said that. Karis one said that. Karis one said that. Now see, this is problematic because this is the same scenario we saw with DJ Mr. C when he kept getting locked up for having sex with all these trainers. And if y'all can remember, Funk Master Flex came out defending him, saying, nah, that's not true. Stop saying my man is gay. Stop saying. But then what happened? Mrs. C comes out and says, yeah, I'm guilty. I like, I like men who look like women. And he's admitting it. So it really made Funk Master Flex look stupid. And I'm saying for Garris One, you're looking very stupid because as Baba Baruti said, we don't know people. We do not know them. We would like to know them, and that's the problem with black folks. We don't have a vetting process to keep people out of our inner circle. You have to prove yourself. In the gang culture, that's it. You have to have an initiation. Within this quote-unquote conscious community, there's no initiation. You quote Dr. Clark, you quote Dr. Ben, you wear an ump, you can go. That's not good enough for us, particularly when it comes to our young people. So we have to be very mindful because these are very influential people that are trying to steer us in the wrong direction. They're using their power and influence to undermine the direction we're trying to take our people to sovereignty and liberation. So KRS One is KRS One. One of the most profound things that I heard from uh, from in Harlem last last Sunday, Captain Tazariox talked about how we usually get passes to the people he talked about, I believe it was a psychological or psychosocial connection between when we have an affinity for somebody, we'll let whatever go. As you see that in Michael Jordan, we are just now checking Michael Jordan. Right. Just now! R. Kelly! R. Kelly! Sisters are still going to see R. Kelly. Right. Gay I know, I'm with you, fam. I was there, I was with the Boom Bap and the Entertainment. I was right there, and the Criminal Minded. We still, I still feel a way when it comes on, on where I'm at. But, the fact of the matter is, you're an enemy. Yes. If you are promoting what, and people like, look, go Google Ron Savage or look at him on YouTube. Tell me that dude ain't telling the truth. Tell me Pop, he's not telling the truth. Right, right, right. They are, they are bleeding their souls. Yes, sir. I just want to say, I went to England in May. A sister came out. I did not know her. We started talking, and she started talking about it. She said, right now in England, she knows 50 men, black men who have all been molested by Bambada, and a bunch of them are in and outside of the mental uh, hospital because they wow. still haven't gotten over. 
Two of them committed suicide. One of them was her close friend. Wow. He's a man. He's a, he's a man. Wow. We just saw young, uh, young Doug come out in the commercial with the dress talking. He's making the, the equation between wearing a dress and being a thug. Baba Baruri talked about the the the, uh, the the affirmations of man. But what do we have to do? To, he's trying to connect wearing a dress to being a black man. Yes. What part of the game is that? Let's go ahead, please. What you got? Uh, question uh, for Baba Baruri. Yes, sir. Um, here in Massachusetts, Boston, um, I have three children, and one of my main issues is the school system. Mm. Much like yourself, my question is. What should be the first steps to create a facility and or curriculum that can offset the troubles that we encounter? Because they tell us, if you take the children straight out of the school, you can get arrested, the start and the third. The home school. The home school. What, 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 should, what our first step should be? Yes, sir. What are the questions? I'm going to try to get bits and pieces, because that's a, that's a big conversation, but it's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, you need to homeschool. That's, that's first and foremost. Um, it, it prevents them from doing a lot of things to you. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to start your own institution, I, I can talk from, from Georgia because states have different stuff, but it's pretty similar. Mm -hmm. um, in the state of Georgia, you can't home anyone but your own, homeschool anyone but your own child. Mm -hmm. So, like at, at Occoban, and what we're doing is not illegal at all, um, Eni and I are professional tutors. The children at the institution, they're being homeschooled by their parents, but they're hiring us to tutor them. Right. Okay, so they're there from 8.30 in the morning to 3.30, get math, tutor, start everything, getting tutored. Right. You know, and it's, it's not legal, that's exactly what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and the main reason why we're not gonna turn it into a school, even though the community understands it as a school, the main reason we're not doing that is because we're not dealing with the rules and regulations right. that they wanna put out. Right. Uh, no one's gonna come to my house to inspect. That's right. To see, you know, that's, that's, that's not happening. The uh, most important thing is deciding to do it. As simple as that may sound, that's a hard decision because you that's a major risk and you're taking on major responsibility. Do not worry about whether you know everything that you need to know to teach your child. Your child will show you what you need to go and research. By the question that they ask, all the rest of that. So don't that's that to me seems to be the biggest fear. The second one is is the money. Uh, the same thing applied to me. When, when we started doing this, I mean, uh, my salary was cut in half, any other salary was cut by more than half. Mm -hmm. But, and we still have the same bills, but this is going to happen. When you make the decision to do it, then it happens. They have us um, believing that unless all of the um, conditions and everything is perfect and in place and ready to go, then you need to not try it. That fear of flying. No. If you know that they're destroying the minds of our children, then you need to do whatever necessary to do that. I'm assuming also in um, here, like in other places, you have uh, book, used book warehouses. In, in Georgia, interestingly, this is how white folks make business for white folks, at the end of the school year, the schools can't use the same text, you know, the <coughs> year. So what he does, he goes around to the, all the schools and collects all the texts that they're throwing away, and then he sells them. So he has a warehouse. Find these uh, warehouses start you a collective of parents. If you are in a situation where income is an issue, well, then find, and you have three, maybe four families who want to do this, then find the couple or the individuals who are best qualified to teach the people, teach the children, and everybody else who's involved, they take a cut in their salary to make sure that they have enough money to do. A lot of, a lot of it is, um, is common sense, and you'll be surprised once you start the number of people, when they realize that you're serious about it, the number of people who after two, three, maybe four years begin to um, make your life easier. Uh, they will start bringing supplies. You will find folks who want to assist. Now, the thing that we were just talking about in terms of parameters, who to let in, that's a, a very important point that um, mm -hmm. Tammy, that's, that maybe is, is number one, number two on the agenda. You're gonna have people gonna wanna volunteer. You need to see them in action in the community without them knowing that they're being watched for a good year. Right. Before you let them anywhere near the children. And then there needs to be another year while you're watching them with the children before you even think about the possibility of them being alone with the children. This, this, you know, this is not a game to play with. And you're going to have people going to come and, and want to volunteer because they see what you're doing and they know that it's good. Okay. But it's not as decide. That's all we did. We, we, we decided. We, 
short. Um, our daughter was in an independent school, but she wasn't, it wasn't African centered, but it was as close as we could get. Her school decided they weren't gonna have a high school. She was entering high school the next year they didn't have enough students. There wasn't a conversation, we didn't have to have a conversation about where she, we knew she wasn't going to public school. There were no other private schools that we were interested in. Uh, she was either gonna be with us in our offices and in classes at Morehouse, or I ended up receiving a, a fellowship which paid my salary for that year. She was gonna be home with me. But once you have made that decision, then everything evolves from that. Once you have made that decision, and, and you have people who you can talk to, message me, email. I might not get back like the next two or three days, but I will get back with you. Yes, sir. Yeah. If we could, let me get, let me get, let me get, let me, I got to move on. I'm sorry, y'all. I know. I know. Um, but we have to be respectful of the time so we can do this again. Um, I just well, yes. add on. Go right ahead. It's actually uh, something called Kamali Academy, which mm -hmm. is a home centered curriculum that Very you can get online from kindergarten to uh, 12th grade. Kamali right. Academy. Kamali Academy. Oh, we'll, be, we'll be putting that out on the yeah. It's, yeah. It is an exceptional yeah. uh, and curriculum. There, and there is the AHAM, the American Home Association yeah. in Massachusetts. There's over mm -hmm. 7,000 children being homeschooled right now. Mm -hmm. This is my daughter. She was homeschooled. I hope. <laughs> Well, Baba Rudy just said reminded me, we have to be uh, vigilant as in terms of our financial support of those who are endeavoring in, in, in what may be seen may seem as unconventional ways of helping our people. It's a shame Dr. Wilson died in this It's just on us. It's a shame somebody else had to pay for, for Dr. Ben's funeral. We should be ashamed of ourselves. I'm talking about those of us who are not designated or can't be designated as elders. It's on us. That's, there's no way we can't throw five, ten dollars each one of us and send our ancestors off with the with the with the dignity that they deserve. For Dr. Wilson to pass the way she did, it's ridiculous. It's horrible. Dr. Ben the same way. Nah, that's over. That's over. Somebody else. I'm around for you, this young man. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, brother Caleb. Go right ahead. No, I just wanted to ask uh, Dr. Baruti about the, uh, the historical thing.